We have heard many times that amongst the purposes of life is that we are tested. We have heard the ayah, الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاةَ لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا the one Allah being the one who created death and life in order that he tests which of us are best in quality of deeds and actions. And a question comes to mind as we live life. Amongst the tests of life, which of the tests are most difficult? Which are the most severe of tests? And I think the answer will depend on the person answering the question. But the more I engage with the community, especially recently, the more I discuss with brothers and sisters about the challenges in their life, young and old, I'm starting to believe that the most difficult test for many Adam, especially in this time, is maintaining resilience after being shaken. Maintaining resilience after have gone going through a difficulty or a challenging situation. And that can come in many different forms. Perhaps one of the most common ones is the unanswered dua. The resilience required in maintaining hope after you have asked and asked and asked and it hasn't come. But rather sometimes the opposite comes. Sometimes this resilience becomes a challenge for people who have made mistakes or they've sinned or they have a bad history and to be able to bounce back and to move forward and to get out of that hole sometimes becomes a challenge for people or the challenge of seeing a situation where you're putting so much input, so much effort and then not seeing the change, the output that you want to see. The resilience in general becomes a very difficult test for us. But today I'd like to pick some lessons from the story of Musa alayhi salam. Many lessons that help us with resilience in different types of scenarios. The first lesson is from the beginning of the story of Musa alayhi salam. When his mother is directed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cast him into the river. This the pain she suffered from this situation, Allah describes it. وَأَصْبَحَ فُؤَادُ أُمِّ مُوسَى ثَارِغًا That the heart of the mother of Musa alayhi salam became like so aching, so, so, so much anxiety and pain because of the emptiness, فَارِغًا because of the emptiness of Musa alayhi salam. It was such a depressing situation for her as Allah describes it. And she almost gives up. She almost loses the resilience test. In kadat la tubadibihi lawla. That she almost revealed the identity of Musa Isa when he was picked up by Ali Fir'aun. She almost just gave up on Allah's direction, Allah's plan. Lawla arrabatana ala qalbiha litakuna min al mu'mineen. But something saved her. Allah said, it was our strengthening of her heart that helped her to hold on and to be amongst those who maintain their faith. And the first lesson that we find here, my brothers and sisters, is that the resilience, the source of it, is going to be the heart that Allah strengthens. And therefore we turn to Allah on this journey. We turn to Allah and ask Allah, Ya Allah, strengthen my heart. And we take the comfort from knowing that we're holding on to Allah. Do not let the material world be the source of your internal strength. What do I mean by this? I mean, you have a difficult situation. And because you've come up with this beautiful solution in your mind, that this is how I'm going to get out, it'll be okay. Because of that in your mind, that solution you have, you're maintaining internal strength. You're sourcing your internal strength on that ability. What happens when that, st that solution, that plan starts to fail? Always, no matter what, we take our asbab and we take the means of the world to come to solutions. But remember, at the end of the day, we are holding on to Allah and the strength that He provides within our hearts. So first and foremost, we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Another lesson we find is when Musa alayhi salam grows. Allah says, and when Musa alayhi salam reached strength and maturity, we gave him two things, wisdom and knowledge. And that's how we reward the people of Ihsan. Now the next ayah, with this ayah in mind, Allah describes this scenario where Musa alayhi salam enters into the city, finds two men fighting. One of them from Bani Israel and one of them from the home or the, the people of Pharaoh. Which side does he take? He takes the side of the one who is from Bani Israel. But which home did he grow up in? He grew up in the home of Pharaoh. Why did he disconnect from the people who took care of him? The Mufassirin said the ayah before it, what Allah gave him, those two things of wisdom and knowledge, gave him the insight to see the dhulm and the wrong path that Ali Fir'aun were on. And therefore he sighed at this point, this was one of the points where he started to disagree with the deen of the people of Pharaoh and the way of the people of Pharaoh. And based on the traumatic past where he's seen constantly Bani Israel being oppressed, he made an assumption that it can only be that the one from Bani Israel is innocent. So he took that side. But he made a mistake. And he engaged in the fight. And as we know, with his strength, he killed the man. And he immediately recognized the mistake and said, هذا من عمل الشيطان. This is from the working, the inspiration of the devil. Now, my brothers and sisters, when it comes to our mistakes of the past and the sins of the past, shaitan will strive to keep you dwelling on that mistake to the point that it paralyzes you from growth, from moving forward, to continue to make you feel like you're inadequate, that you're not worthy of Allah's mercy, Sometimes making you think that, I don't know, you're having doubts if Allah even forgave you. Because you think what you did was too wrong, or you did too many wrongs. And this becomes something that blocks you coming closer to Allah SWT. Or you going to the masjid. Or you doing anything religious. Because you feel like, I'm too dirty for that. I'm not that good of a person. My brothers and sisters, Musa alayhi salam killed a person. And the first thing that we take in bouncing back from our mistake is what Musa alayhi salam said, قَالَ رَبِّ إِنِّي ظَلَمْتُ نَفْسِي فَاغْفِرْ لِي He said, my Lord, I have wronged myself, please forgive me. And what did Allah do right after that? فَغَفَرْ عَلَى In the same ayah, the same line, and the usage of fa, فَغَفَرْ عَلَى Which means it came right after he said, فَغْفِرْ لِي Right away, Allah forgave him. No matter what mistake we made, if you have gone to Allah with a repentant heart and you've asked for forgiveness and you've regretted it and you're making this commitment not to go back, Allah forgave you. Khalas! Of the beauty of Islam, that the forgiveness of Allah SWT, all it takes is sincere coming to Allah, going to Allah. Nothing else. And therefore, no that it's time for you to move forward. Don't dwell on it. And I'm mentioning this, you may think it's some, for some of you, you may think this is not an issue for you. Wallahi, this is a major problem. For those of us who do counseling, this is a major problem. Getting out of the hole of our negative past. But when we go forward, we then learn from Musa alayhi salam another lesson in going forward. Because he ended up being in a similar situation where the same person who sought his help that caused him to make that mistake came again. But this time Musa said what? إِنَّكَ لَغَوِيُّ مُبِينَ That you're, you're a troublemaker. Something's up with you. But what you find here is that Musa salam learned something from the first mistake. And this is the next principle that we take. That the lessons we learn from our mistakes make us better than we were before the mistake. I remember famous basketball player talking about his greatness, how he achieved greatness, how he became so good. And he said, from making all the mistakes you can possibly make in the game. 
That's what he said. Because after every mistake, he learned a lesson. And the accumulation of lessons gave him the great status that he has today. If we can learn to look at our mistakes, and not to say that we intentionally should make mistakes, but the sincere mistakes we have, we learn to look at the past, the negative past, and learn from it, and grow from it. This is the way of Islam. We fast forward to the situation when Musa alayhi salam enters the city. He's in a fugitive state, poor, poverty, doesn't have any family, nothing. And he's in a really dire situation. He finds the two women who are trying to, or they're waiting to water their flock. But they can't do so because of all the men that are in front. They can't find an opportunity. So he recognizes their state of difficulty. What does he do? He helps them. He serves them. My brothers and sisters, when we are in that difficult time and situation, how often do we think about servicing or giving? Oftentimes we get so caught up that we only care about ourselves at that time. But Musa salam, even through his difficulty, he has this inclination, this idea of taking opportunities and seizing them and serving and giving the benefit of this. When you are in a difficult situation, Allah talked about it as well. Those people who spend in ease and hardship. When you are in hardship and you give or you serve in the capacity that you can, amazing thing happens. Is it's that moment you start to compare your situation, as bad as it may be, to another person's situation who may be, have less well-being than you. The Prophet ﷺ said one of the means of establishing gratitude to Allah is to compare your situation with people who have less well-being than you. When you're in a mode of service, you're giving something that you have that they don't have. That you have that they don't have. And immediately that becomes a medicine and inspiration for gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we are in that difficulty, recognizing that it could be worse and it is worse for others, and you actually have things to say thank you for, that becomes a key for the resilience at that time, my brothers and sisters. And we'll end the first khutbah by speaking about how this story ended, in which Musa alayhi salam and the ashab of Musa, the people of Musa are fleeing from Fir'aun. And the people of Musa alayhi salam, they actually start to doubt and lose hope in this faith. And they say to Musa alayhi salam, Udina min qabli an ta'tiyana. We have been oppressed before you came to us. Wa min ba'di ma jittana. And after you came to us, we are being oppressed. Mufassirin said they're saying that since this, before this message of Islam was brought to us by you, we were oppressed. Since it came after, we became oppressed again. They're wondering, what's going on? This is supposed to be Allah's religion, Allah's deen. Why, why are we continuing to be oppressed? Musa alayhi salam does three things to empower them, to give them resilience. Number one, he says to them, Inna al-arda lillah yurithuha may yasha. That this earth belongs to Allah, he causes whomever he wills to inherit it. Reminding them that number one, Allah is in control of this show at the end of the day. Regardless of what you see, Allah is in control of this show. Number two, the second thing he does to empower them is he tells them, وَالْعَاقِبَةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ That the good end is for the people of taqwa. In other words, reorienting them to think about the akhirah. All of this will come to an end. They will die, we will die. And the good end is for al-muttaqeen. And the third empowerment of resilience he gives them. He says to them, عَسَى رَبُّكُمْ أَيُّهْلِكَ عَدُوَّكُمْ وَيَسْتَخْلِفَكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ Maybe your Lord would destroy your enemy and give you the inheritance, the, the, the firm foothold on the earth. What he does here, my brothers and sisters, is he reorients them from thinking about the negative past in history to think about what's possible for the future. To think about what's possible for the future. And that possibility becomes limitless when you are with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the creator. And this is what gave Musa the strength when the oceans in front of them, the armies behind them, where are we going to go? When we're with Allah, anything is possible. 
قَالَ كَلَّا إِنَّ مَعْيَ رَبِّي سَيَهْدِينَ And Allah made what happen? Allahu Akbar. أَقُولُ قُولِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ لَكُمْ فَاسْتَغْفِرُهُ إِنَّهُ غَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الحمد لله I just want to leave with a quick reminder for myself and for all of us, my brothers and sisters. What every oppressor wants is that the people who are advocating for the oppressed become numb to the issue. Forget about the issue. Continue to live their lives because it's been going on for so long that they give up. It is imperative that we do not become numb and complacent to the plight of our brothers and sisters in Philistine. Naturally, with anything in life, you keep repeating something, repeating something, repeating something with no change. Naturally, we tend to just kind of, you know, lose energy, lose enthusiasm. But this is exactly what they want, and this is what they've been doing for decades. There's some... Some, some energy is stirred up, activism, but there's no change, and then we start to give up. We have to recognize one thing. Even though you didn't see the major change, there have been progresses. There have been things happening. I remember our imam was telling us, as you guys know, the staffers, several weeks ago, they started to protest. And these were the staffers who were answering all the calls, answering all the calls of advocacy. And they started to become affected themselves. And they started, they stood up. They said, you know what? No, we're not going to support these oppressors anymore. You know what I'm talking about, right? So our imam was at a meeting downtown. And one of the representatives knew that he's from Adam Center. And he said to him, your community has been blowing up our phone lines. That your community, Adam Center, has been calling like crazy. So what does that mean? That means our advocacy caused people who are inside to stand up, to have a change of heart. And you see more and more as the world begins to come closer and closer to supporting Philistine, not only are they supporting Philistine, people are starting to convert to Islam, Allahu Akbar. Are starting to convert to Islam. Why? Because we, alhamdulillah as an ummah, most of us, have been giving the Palestinians a voice, have been giving them a platform, have been showing their videos, as sad as they may be, we've been showing their videos on social media. People who are coming to Islam because of what they're seeing in Philistine wouldn't have this if it wasn't for us giving the voiceless a voice. These are little steps of progress. And bi-idhnillahi ta'ala, it will accumulate into a final victory. In kalla inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. When they try to tell us to give up, tell, repeat that. Inna ma'ya rabbi sayahdeen. The one who made the ocean split can bring victory to our brothers and sisters in Philistine. But we have to keep at it. I recommend just to keep your heart connected every salah. One of your sajda in every salah devoted to Philistine. This will keep you connected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us to stay connected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help our brothers and sisters in Philistine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve them of their difficulty. Help us to be tools for change. May Allah to help us to be resilient in bouncing back from our mistakes and from our calamities and to maintain our faith and hope in Him. Allahumma ya muqallib al-qulub thabbit qulubna ala deenik. Rabbana la tuzin qulubna ba'da idh hadaytana wa hablana min ladunk rahma innaka anta al-wahhab. Allahumma ya arhamma rahimeen. Allahumma ansur ikhwanana al-mustada'afina fi filastina ya rabb al-alameen. Allahumma kullahum awnan wa nasira wa mu'ayyidan wa zahira ya rabb al-alameen. Allahumma taqabbal shuhada'ahum. اللهم عافي مبتلاهم اللهم داوي جرحاهم يا رب العالمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على محمد سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين قيم الصلاه